Good Day World. I'm Charles Williams here at the Carpenter Marriott in Boston, Massachusetts, where the Society for the Advancement of Sierra Leoneans in Massachusetts has welcomed and invited the President, Mr. Ernest Bai Koroma, who will be speaking to investors and the people of Massachusetts. So right now I'm going to introduce to you Mr. Abu Kumba, one of the members of the Society of Advancements of Sierra Leoneans in Massachusetts. Mr. Kumba, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, Mr. So um, please tell us what Mr. Koroma is doing here in Boston or Massachusetts and what your group stands for. Well, Mr. Kumba, the President is going to be uh, addressing the next nation. And uh, we invited him to Boston, so I listened to meet with the Israeli community. I also meet with some investors who are in Massachusetts, who are doing work in Sierra Leone, and who are here to organize this program. Saslama so is a non-partisan uh, organization, non-ethical, uh, uh, ethnic organization. Also, we are focused mostly on bringing together Sierra Leoneans from uh, different uh, diaspora. And uh, what we try to do is, we feel that it's necessary for Sierra Leoneans to express themselves and see what they feel about what's happening in the country and what we can do to help the country. So it's a very neutral organization, no political base, nothing like that. We don't have no tribal base. So we just focus mostly on trying to bring people together. All right, we heard it from Mr. Abu Kumba. We're going to talk to more of the members of the group from the SAS, SAS, Saslama. Saslama. Saslama, it's a new group. Saslama, we're going to talk to some of the investors and hopefully we're going to get up and close and personal with the president himself. So let's go talk to some of the investors. Um, we're here with Mr. Ambassador Tom Hall and Mr. Alfred. How do you say that? Smart. Um, so tell us, are you guys um, have any questions for the president, or where will be? Are you investors, or what's no, your stake? I'm uh, <laughs> used to be the U.S. ambassador to Sierra Leone. I met with the ambassador in Freetown in July, so I think we've had our discussion. Okay. So I'm in good shape. Uh, nice to see you, ambassador. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm here with Mr. David, Dr. David Jordan of the Seven Hills Program. How are you doing, Mr. Jordan? I am very well. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. It's a pleasure to meet you once again. He's come to our church and spoken. And I know you do a lot of uh, work in the African countries, especially Sierra Leone. So let's talk about that. Um, what brings you here today? Well, uh, again, it's very uh, honored to be invited here to meet your Sierra Leone president and to talk about our work uh, assisting local uh, partners in Sierra Leone create health and education services in rural districts. Um, most of my work is, is done outside of you know, Boak, uh, Sierra Leone, and uh, we work with local people, uh, local church partners, local uh, business partners in creating sustainable uh, education programs and sustainable health programs. And our hope is to uh, is to duplicate these what we call clinic schools combined in uh, many rural districts throughout Sierra Leone. So we just come back recently from uh, uh, from Bandua, so I go and have dedicated the first clinic school that was served uh, is now serving uh, about five or six hundred children and supports uh, health care for women. Uh, about three or four thousand women are supported by this one clinic that we worked with a, a local partner in uh, in Bandura. So it's uh, it's a pleasure. To here and in Sierra Leone is sort of my second home. So I always feel very, very honored by Sierra Leone. Yeah, I guess I speak of the people of Sierra Leone and say thank you very much for the work that you're doing and continue to do. Um, any questions for the president or any, you know, are you looking for any assistance? We're actually, um, I'm interested in explaining in a very short period of time, I have a very busy man, and many people that want to talk to him. Um, I, I am not looking for anything from the president, I just want to inform him of what we're doing, and uh, ask that he allow us to uh, continue our efforts in partnering with local uh, ministries and other organizations in Sierra Leone to further advance public health and public education. Uh, through our clinic school approach. Uh, my hope is to get his uh, endorsement so we can now then go to USAID, World Bank, or other um, larger financial organizations that could uh, be potentially be interested in supporting women's health and uh, uh, education for girls and boys in, in the country. Uh, Thank you very much, Mr. Okay. Thank you. Let's make some, uh, clear the line. All right, okay. All right, here is the president and the first lady. Good 
was waiting for you. I am. I am also a I'm sorry. I have so much to take care of. But in Malaysia. And this is a man that's from a friend of ours from Malaysia. Yeah, from Sierra Leone. Yeah, from Miami. Yeah, from Miami. And this is Judy Gill, Dr. Judy Gill from the uh, University of Massachusetts. She used to be the Chancellor of Higher Education here in Massachusetts. So, uh, we wanted to have a meeting. Oh, well, thank you. For thank you very much. For I'm glad we got the governor to invite you to come because he's, he's looking forward to seeing you very, very much. And he is my partner. So, uh, we've well. teamed up with you. We've <laughs> known each other for what, 30 years or so? This is the chairman of the Amnesty. Yes. Yes. Okay. Okay. Where were you? Which school? Because the other year. Yeah. Getting me out of time. Yeah. We had a good. I have visited Boston on four different occasions and I always informed the civil union community elsewhere that if only we can have civil union organizations replicating Boston we will have a wonderful time. Responsibility, Mr. President. <laughs> um, but I also want to say something else about wealth. Uh, one of the nicest, most important, most powerful things about the Peace Corps is that it helps people to understand that there are many kinds of wealth. And when I was in Sierra Leone, I remember that when I first got there, I had learned a little Mende and a little Creole, I had learned some Temne. And I was walking along this uh, road trying to get to Njala from Bowen. I was first trying to get to Bowen. I remember walking along, I was about two miles outside, and this old pa was walking this way. And I was walking this way, and he could tell I was lost in many different ways. I was lost. But I said, uh, Excuse me, pa, I want to get to Bowen. And he looked at me. And I thought maybe I said, Bo, morning, Pa. I defend Bo. <laughs> he looked at me again. And I realized what the problem was. And I started again. I said, morning, Pa. I'll be fumble, Pa. I'll let you sandal, Pa. Bo, do ya? I defend Bo. came over his face. And he looked at me and says, Kao go no. So he walked for two miles with me so that I could get to go. Very different response. We had the Bermajia Commission to inquire into prisons. And they've done a wonderful job. We've accepted their reports, we have published our paper, and we have appointed a task force to implement the provisions, the recommendations of the right to paper. And I must say that uh, the recommendations are great. It involves a lot of sacrifice, huge budgetary provisions, for us to transform the educational sector. We must reduce the illiteracy in the country. We know that the only way you can empower anybody is through education. Yeah. The 
only way we can better manage the development of Sierra Leone, the only way we can take full responsibility and be in charge of our development is when we have an educated Sierra Leonean community. That is why education will continue to be our priority because we know that without the resources that we have, not only with education, we will survive and continue to develop as a nation. So this is where we are in terms of the major priority sectors that we have identified. They, I call them major because they are key. But we cannot just limit ourselves to the major issues. We also have to ensure that as we move along, we create the environment that will sustain the growth that we have initiated. That is why we added two aspects of activity in this major sector. One of it is ensuring that we continue with the good governance issues. And the other is to improve on the private sector environment so that we can attract investment in the country that will sustain the country. On the issues of good governance, one of the diseases that we have in the country was and is still corruption. We inherited the 2002 Anti-Corruption Act, which we considered as an act that gave authority to the anti-corruption to fight corruption, but limited the powers that was given to the authority. To make the authority more powerful, to give them the authority to investigate and prosecute on their own without the interference of government, we amended the act and had the 2008 Anti-Corruption Act. That act expanded the crimes <coughs> of corruption from 13 to 25 and also gave <coughs> the Commission the authority to prosecute and charge anybody with no exception whom they have evidence a corrupt act. We have given them the independence to act, and I'm sure you are following up the activities of the anti corruption. We've also given independence to the Human Rights Commission to act. You're also following their activities. Political Parties Registration Commission is also making a steady progress. All of these governance institutions are making progress. <coughs> Just two weeks ago, the Human Rights Commission was given the A status by the commissions that is coordinating the activities all over the world. This is an indication of the independence we have given to them and also the activities of the commission. The Transparency International has shown us as a country that has improved substantially on the fight against corruption, on being <laughs> the Moibram Index have also positioned us as a government <coughs> that is effecting great reforms on governance government that is sensitive to the feelings of the people and the government that is transparent. 
So it's not just the effort we are making, it's not just empty talks, but we are also being recognized by the improvements we are making in all of these regions. <laughs> in the private sector development, our government firmly believes that as a government, you are